welcome, Jono. It's lovely to have you here. Just thank you very, very much, Rupert. Kind of, um, um, what would be your, sadly, you know, you were plunged into that tinnitus maze. How did that kind of start historically? What happened to you, Jono, firstly? Uh, re rewind. So ex, ex muso. That, we all do that, don't you? It depends what you play. You just stick like what what. what you guess guess what I used to play. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I suppose for me, um, with with regards to the tinnitus, I mean that was that was a sign really for for me. But rewinds sort of fifteen years bef before that, um, into my I suppose uh, early twenties. And getting established as a, as a working musician, and this is great, you know, and gigs and stuff, um, and doing anything really just to make make a make a living. So it's fantastic. Uh, moved up to London, um, yeah. So normal sort of jobbing musician, freelance musician, fantastic. You know, out you know some weeks, three four nights a week, maybe. You know, it it was great. I was living the dream, you know. Um, you know, earning money out of a plank of wood and four pieces of wire, you know, that's all <laughs> I wanted, wanted to do. And then, uh, you know, obviously gigs, and it was all, you know, mainly backline, uh, in normal backline setup, and some gigs bigger than others. But I was aware, you know, after the gigs that, you know, most gigs for 15 years, it was having this ringing afterwards. And it's depending on what gigs I was doing different bands and stuff like that some you know some pop some function some sort of quite heavy sort of rock sort of stuff but I was aware that after the gigs you'd go home you'd have this muffledness like you know being to a nightclub and it's yeah what I know now is temp temporary temporary threshold shift temporary threshold shift um and, and the ringing in 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 my ears and but that just that's what happened that just it's just an occupational hazard just didn't eat but I didn't think anything about it because the, the morning after it gone it gone away. Mo normally it go away. And also when we were younger, same with social, just socially going to gigs as well. You know, going to see bands as a musician. You know, into music, going out, seeing live gigs, being down the front. You know, all that sort of stuff. It was like, oh wow, how's that loud? I can't hear anything. You know, and coming out from clubs and gigs and or coming off stage and go, wow, that was mad. You know. Or that was too loud. The monitor mix was rubbish. You know, whatever. So it was there, but it it went away. And then it was, um, I suppose, uh, how old was I then? Mid thirties, I suppose it was. Mid late thirties. Um, and then I went on holiday, and it was it didn't go well. I think I was gigging on the Saturday and on Sunday, and I went away on holiday on the Monday, and it was still there on the Monday. And then on the Tuesday and then on the Wednesday, and it was just like, <laughs> this is, I was on this two week holiday abroad. And um, yeah, that was it, freaked me out, complete freaked me out. Didn't sleep for two weeks, it ruined the holiday, uh, came back. Um, and I was aware also in some social situations that I was struggling to try and focus on what people were, were saying. Oh no. Yeah, and I thought that it was like, you know, uh, maybe another muso joke. It was kind of like, well, you, you're probably listening to the music more than you're focusing on what people are saying. But I, wa I, was, I was aware, um, uh, yeah, in certain situations I couldn't, and everybody else seemed to be able to hear everybody all right, and, and, and I, I couldn't anyway. So I did, um, uh, I went for a hearing test. I thought, I thought it was, uh, more so at home socially you know getting getting accused of selective hearing and stuff like that seriously if the radio was on and can't you hear me you know sort of thing you need to get your hearing tested um so i did and there we are so i had an audiometric testing pure tone audiometric hearing test um and i don't think i'd had one since i was kind of i don't know maybe at school yeah um which is nuts isn't it so uh considering you have your eyes tested sort of yeah. Years. and that was it bang and then the audiologist said um yeah it came out of the booth and he said yeah i thought i did all right i thought yeah i can hear everything pretty much he said a classic noise induced hearing loss he said have you worked in the aircraft industry oh no and i said no i've worked in the music industry music industry and he goes well didn't you wear any earplugs and i said well what are you talking about i don't wearing earplugs i want i want to i want to hear i want to hear the music i, I, I don't want to block it out 
because of course you know maybe i might have tried earplugs uh, you know but it was just the ones you'd, you'd wear you know the foam ones just were complete block no one wore them and there was too much occlusion you couldn't really sing. Yeah. I, I didn't really sing any lead vocals but backing vocals you couldn't really you know so that that was it so the, the tinnitus and that was it so this he said that notch there he said that proves that it's not hereditary he goes this is in this is externally this is damage that's been done to the sensory hair cells in the cochlea and i was like what what are you talking about so he explained how the ear worked so there you go uh, you know working as a musician I, did, I didn't even know how the ear worked no me neither and it was like and he said well and i said well okay so what do we do about it and he goes well you don't you can't that's it I was like, what do you mean? I said, well, I'll just stop gigging for a bit. And then it will, no, that's it. The, you know, the sensory hair cells die off. So, so I, um, my left hand side um, is, uh, well, both similar, but more so this side. Also st standing stage right, I suppose as well. Um, but two, four, six kilohertz, more sort of four, two, four kilohertz. I've got about 42, 45 decibel loss. Crikey. So that's quite a, that's a big notch, you know, that's why, and that's why he, and then they, he said, that's why you can't hear people in noisy situations or you can hear them. I said, I can hear them, but I can't quite make out the, the sounds. I said, it's like having a graphic equalizer and you sort of, he said, yeah, because all the consonant sounds, yeah. sounds, which are really important in our language system as well. Yeah. Um, he said they're all they all sit in that frequency where you've lost it. So you're hearing other things, but but not hearing those consonant sounds. So, so making out the sounds, and then I realised how much I was kind of lip reading a little bit, trying to make up the information. But yeah, socially it was a problem. And I'd go to a, a restaurant, and you know, um, I mean, my wife at the time said, "Oh, this." She could tell I, I'd just disengage with the conversation, I'd just sit again. Yeah, yeah. Or if I was at a dinner party, I'd have to sit this way round, so I'd have. You know, if you've got your good ear, you know, so, but it was a struggle, but you did, you just switched off. Switch. It's really, it's, it's unbelievably tragic. I, I know the same thing. Um, I didn't want to just deliberately just butt in there, John. Oh, it's just, it suddenly reminded me of, I, I know I, I have hearing loss as well. Um, and I just know as well also that when it's time to have earwax removed, everybody starts to lisp and I hear lisping all the time. And because I use ear protection and I, I, I actually so have to thank you and your company because mm. I don't I definitely don't think well I know I wouldn't be doing music unless I had in the early days, which is when you used to produce the ER range. Yeah, um, I've got them all I've got them all here. I keep them all the time. Um, I've got you've got a little ACS museum. Yeah, it really is. It's right from the, your very early days of early creation, right to the modern day. It really is. But they have been a lifesaver. I, I went from the eights to the fifteens to the twenty fives to the twenty sevens to I think I, I've got even stronger to the total blocks. Um, they've been so useful to me. So how did you get around the tinnitus and the hearing loss? What happened to you? Did you have to wear hearing aids, John? No, I didn't. Didn't I? I mean, first of all, it was like, oh, shit, you know. Yeah, yeah. It then, is. I, then I got a bit paranoid about it, so I, I did. Obviously, I couldn't just stop gigging. And like most musicians, you're doing, you know, portfolio career. So it was, uh, it was, you know, gigging was my main bread and butter. I got involved with the. Um, I was doing some teaching then for this uh, uh, national. Um, I was just teaching bass, actually, um, in Cambridge um on a, a course but i mean you can't just stop i mean what else can you do you know it's like oh my god i'm gonna have to get the dreaded proper you know get a proper job so but i, ca I carried on but it was getting more i was getting more and more getting more and more stroppy and <laughs> john o stroppy mm. <laughs> some people might be laughing out there but I, I did get a bit i did get a bit stroppy because it was just like oh just turn it down you know christ backline you know it's just like you know the, the drums on stage you know and then you got the back line in it so but i did i did it just got to me in the end it was just i did, and i became very cynical about the whole thing i think well you know i've damaged my hearing you know um also we all we all want to we all want you know you know you know we all want a bit, you know we want a, yeah. a bit of fame and 
whatever and it was just like where's all this going so yeah I pretty got depressed about it for sure um and then coping with it and I'm quite a light sleeper anyway and th this sort of compounded the problem yeah absolutely um, so yeah so listening to things at night um radio but of course if you're with a partner or you know married or whatever that's a bit of a problem and I couldn't really you know wear the earphones and bed kept falling out and stuff and you know so yeah it was a it was it was a problem yeah I mean I I sleep for years really it was just yeah. nightmare and then you know but again and where where do you go for help you know um you get referred on to an audiologist but you know it's it's just one of those occupational one of those occupational things really I think one of the things you've done to really turn it around is obviously what you're doing now and that's some way of making sense of something so dreadful and it was the same for me John it was the it was the idea of putting something back into the situation and going back into that arena but going back into it in a different way with a different light and a different perspective and yeah. what, what you've done even with um, the, the T minus is that you've really shown us a lot of kindness and you've given us a chance to develop and try and establish ourselves i'm truly grateful for that john i've got a, a big question here from silas actually and i wanted to ask silas this question it's a great question and it's so simple how loud is too loud john <laughs> well okay where, where do i start it's about it's about how long you listen to things at what volume basically. so noise exposure time yeah Time constant, how loud? Very easy. Very. This is the. This is, I've done loads of lectures on this. To, to you're the best at this, Jono, and that's oh, why I asked you. And, and you taught me so much. I mean, I oh. kind of knew some of those things, but you were able to give so much detail. So I can't Bless wait you. for this. That's why I really wanted this to, to be the beginning. Okay. <laughs> right, here you go. So the easiest way, and this is in line with the noise at work regulations. But anyway, yeah. the easy way to sound what is it okay so it's vibrations in a gas yeah so you've got vibrations per, per, or as a music student said to me wiggly air <laughs> i like that. so you've got this Great. wiggly air. you've got these vibrations in a, in a gas and they vibrate or, or they you know pulse sound pressure waves per second which is gives you the the pitch so frequency how many times per second which we measure in hertz or kilohertz well it doesn't really matter it could be bananas to be honest with you <laughs> that gives you the pitch and then you've got the amplitude which is the loudness okay but we measure that because there's such an extreme in the measurement of sound pressure in in terms of amplitude it, it, it's measured logarithmically by decibels okay so um so yeah so there we are but what you do need to remember just quickly is that because it's a logarithmic measurement that 3 db increase in sound volume sound pressure or whatever sound pressure level is twice as loud it's twice the sound pressure intensity so every time you go up 3 db it's twice as loud if you, if you reduce it it's half as loud so simple so yeah at 85 decibels this is a rule of thumb you yeah. rough exposure time before you temporarily or over long periods of time damage your hearing you've got about eight hours which is a normal working day. So that's the second action level in the noise at work regulations, which if you've had a noise assessment, risk assessment done in your working environment, um, over 85 decibels, if it's over that, it's compulsory issue of hearing protection. There you go, bang. Wow. That's not even a five piece drum kit playing a funk groove, do you know what I mean? God. So um, for now every three dB, three dB increase in sound pressure, uh, loudness, is twice as loud. So if it's twice as loud, you should half your exposure time. Wow. Okay. So 85 to 88, eight hours, four hours, 88, 91. Okay. So two hours, blah, 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 blah. So when you get up to mid 90s, 97 decibel, I'm in a drum kit. I always, this is a dating point. Yeah. Kit, normal rock and roll setup, five piece drum kit or whatever, back line. You're looking mid 90s, 94, 97 decibels. So, so at 97 decibels, your, your safe exposure time is roughly around 30 minutes. <laughs> so normal on stage sound level, this is not front of house, this is on stage. And then we'll, we can talk about DJs, DJs later, but you know, you're looking at upper 90s, 100 dBs. 
So then when looking back on that, reflecting on my own career or what yeah. you want, rehearsals, gigs, yeah. sessions, going to gigs, da, da, da. am I now surprised I've damaged my hearing? Yeah. No. Simple. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and I think it was just ignorant. You know, people just on stage sound levels just so loud, and I, you know, I think things have things have changed changed now. Anyway, so that that that's that's the that's the rule of thumb. So if you're constantly exposing your ears to sound pressure levels, you know, in the upper nineties or in in the hundreds, you know, you 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 you're at serious risk. And legally, in in a in a in a working environment, if your employer has a duty of care. You can't work in those environments without having personal protective equipment. So there you go. That is absolutely horrific. It, it, I'm just thinking the same, and I'm just thinking, wow, we would rehearse for eight hours, probably, like you did. Yeah. Then you um, practice your instrument, probably at the weekend, and then you would go and do a tour, so you would be playing at louder noise levels. You'd probably up it a bit. I know I did, because you're in gig yeah. mode. And you're excited and you might be playing to how many thousand people on a tour and and then you know you're then having a chat about uh you know how the gig went in a loud environment after the gig it's just noise 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 the only it's, time you're not exposed to it is when you're sleeping on the tour coach but even that probably is quite a few decibels anyway when it's accelerating Rupert we, we never used to sleep on tour buses you know that well, yeah, they might be right, actually. Um, yeah, probably not, but yeah. Well, no, because of because of the noise, obviously, not for yeah, reason, obviously for any other reasons. <laughs> Which is okay, where? I'm do you know what? Yeah. That, do you know what? Funny enough, that would be the only place I would wear earplugs. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah, just to stop because because uh, you, yeah. you wanted to because everybody snored. Yeah, <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. That's it. Absolutely right. But you know the golden rule when you're touring on a tour bus, don't you? <clears throat> what what goes no, num no number twos in the toilet okay oh sorry yes yeah yeah Don't okay i've got another question <laughs> okay it's a bit of an obvious one but i it's it's one from me actually um because okay. uh i think it's important and i think you've kind of you've all met ready kind of answer in some degree but who should wear hearing protection please who who are the people that should wear it Obviously, any, musicians. Yeah. Any anybody at risk. Yeah. I mean, if, you know, this is this is when I got involved with music education. It's like the, these are your tools of your trade, right? Now, if you were in any other discipline, if you were, if you were um, an athlete, you'd look after your body. If you were a dancer, you know, um, you'd look after your body, because that's that's you know, if if a drummer friend of mine, George Fothergill, great guy um from he's not from leeds he would but he's from up north anyway um he just tells it how he is he says if your ears don't work neither do you yeah that's that's pretty true so who so who should wear hearing protection well <clears throat> anybody that's you know wants to look after their hearing really the thing is is just knowing when you are at risk that's 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 the problem and also you know it, you know, I'd, I say this in so many lectures I do, don't, don't get paranoid about, you know, like, oh my God, I must put my earplugs in. It's, it's, a, it's about the time and the yeah. loudness. And obviously you've got to remember also with different genres of music, the dynamic is, is very different. I would say the, the most, the people at the highest risk are people that work and go, are involved with the electronic dance music scene. Wow. Okay. Clubs, the, those sound pressure levels are, dance music more often than not apart from the drop there you go no one yeah. you know it, it's that volume all the time and you, you're talking i mean i won't tell you the clubs we've done sound pressure level uh testing but i mean you're talking 100 plus right oh my god yeah i mean one one booth one dj booth <laughs> i won't tell you where it was <laughs> but it was 117 in the booth and you know these, these places you know and as i've got older actually i've got i, I actually like dance music a little bit more actually yeah, yeah. I used to but you, you go in there for an hour uh, if an hour and if you haven't got your earplugs or whatever you you've got you can you can you're aware of the temporary threshold shift straight away this muffledness 
because you know it's extreme you know the sensory hair cells getting you know flattened down pretty much straight away so it's got to be over 100 decibel and so seeing so many we do a lot more in the electronic dance music with djs but also with club goers clubbers that, that you know so many young people that are damaging their hearing before they're even 30 i've spoken to these these people in 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 the uk in amsterdam in in ibiza in malta these hardcore club goers that have got tin some of them got tinnitus but a lot of them have got music induced hearing loss already as young as 16 well one, one girl i remember talking to was 16 how she got into the club i don't know but anyway um she had, she had no she actually had chronic tinnitus it's a big problem so you know um um, the, some of them before they even start their start their careers and a lot of djs young djs are producing music so they're in the studio and i found this um actually i've got, it's got the same speakers here actually um when i went away from gigging live and started doing a bit of home studio tra uh, trails and audio bits and stings for audio visual products and yeah. things People would comment on my mixing, and they go, "Jono, uh, uh, yeah, love, love, love the track. Yeah, what did you, what, what speakers did you mix it on?" And I say, "Well, well, Mackie eight twenty fours, but it's like, what, what do you mean? What are you listening to it on? Well, it sounds a bit trebly. And then, of course, I didn't realise because because of my loss, I've got this big notch. I was boosting all those frequencies, so I can't mi mix flat. So my all my mixing. So I've heard this quite a few with sound engineers and stuff, and and, and producers that are, you know." if you damage your hearing they struggle to mix properly because it sounds all right to them but not to everybody else so having to use software to sort of see it see the frequency you're, you're absolutely right I, I went the opposite way Jono, because i was so concerned with the tinnitus and hyperacusis um, yeah. in 2008 i had another bout of it really bad one that mm. i i had a problem with top end so people were coming back to me and saying there's absolutely no life in it or no top end and because everything just seemed so zingy i i felt like I wanted to protect myself in everything right. that I did. So all, uh, my mixes just sounded like the, the undersea world of, you know, Jacques Cousteau. It just was bizarre until, you know, you suddenly get the rebalance again. And then, you know, you've got that wonderful world of sound again. But it, it does take long, doesn't it, to attenuate and to reevaluate your thinking on sound. And it's very, very tricky. There's so much that goes into what we've had to go through. It really so does. Uh, yeah. Very much so. And it's, it's a neurological experience as well, because, you know, you, you hear with your brain, the ears are just a mechanism of transferring wobbly air. There you go. Yeah. To, yeah. Um, to a nerve impulse. Yeah. Remember when I did try out um, some hearing aids. <clears throat> True story. So um, Paul Checkley at Harley Street Hearing. There you go. Uh, to those guys there. Uh, musicians Hearing Services. He, he said, John, I try, try out some digital hearing aids, you know, and they're not cheap. He said, try, try, try some, come in, get fitted. We can, we can, we can match it to your loss. So it will, yeah. it will you, you hear flat again, you know, hear flat frequency response again. I thought, amazing, let's, 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 let's do it. So I went in just before Christmas, a couple of, well, a few Christmases ago. And um, he came in and he had the, he had the box. He goes, oh, these, these are, these are for, um, these are for another customer, uh, but these are the ones I want you to try, but he's not coming into January. I haven't got any others in stock, so you can have these. So here we go. And he gave me the box. It was all printed up with the customer's name on it. I hope it's all right saying this, but anyway, it was, it was Pete Townsend. No, wow. and I said, said um, Pete Townsend. He goes, yeah, you know, the guitarist from The Who. So, so for Christmas, I had Pete Townsend's hearing aids. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> to fame. but no but he he is he is a client of theirs and um obviously he has he has got some so anyway i put these um i'll probably be on some libel thing now but um he, he uh, so i tried these out and as soon as i put them on it was it was freaked me out completely because every you know like um paper, paper anything was just i could hear all this it, it freaked me out so he said, you, you've got to let, you've got to, you know, you've got to wear them for two weeks. You know, you've got to, so I thought, well, I'm going to go to a lot of social things at Christmas. So let's just check it out. Walked out onto Harley Street and onto Marleybone High Street. And I was like, a, I was like a, a scared cat. Honestly, it was just, oh, I had to turn them off. Wow. My phone put, I said, I've had to turn them off. I can't get on a train like this. It's just freaking me out. And he goes, that, that's what you should be. That's what your hearing should be like. Because it was just it was just profile to what I lost. 
Anyway, I did get on all right with it. But then in pubs or socially, I could hear too much. So instead of not being able to hear that much and trying to focus on what people were hearing, I think, I was, I, think I was in Brighton actually at the time. I went down to Brighton, met some fruit, few friends. And it was, I couldn't, it was, it was just hearing too much. Shut <laughs> <What's> up! <laughs> So, um, but yeah, it takes a while, takes a while for, for, the, for, the, for the brain to readjust. But th that's when you realise the difference, the, the, the loss that you've got. So, um, yeah. And the same with the tinnitus. It is a neurological, you know, you learn, yeah. you learn to manage it. Oh, sorry, just going back to the tinnitus and yeah, please. coping with it and stuff. But very much um, um, the tinnitus clinic I went to in Ipswich, to be fair, they were, they were, um, and I had an MRI and, and all of that sort of stuff and looking for an acoustic neuroma and they said, they said no it is, it is noise induced it's definitely music induced funny enough and, and that guy I think he was a professor of somebody or other at Ipswich Hospital he, he, he said oh what do you do so <laughs> of course they were like oh yeah you couldn't make it up really but um, yeah they it said it's, it's like a bad back it's never really going to go away you just got to manage it yeah yeah you've got to do pilates for the brain <laughs> yeah that's really that's that was great quite advice. good so that, that was good it was a, it's a mental you know a, a, a thing but i've done all sorts of things i mean i've done tai chi um uh what else yeah all, all that sort of meditation stuff but um yeah i mean now well we can get onto your app but i mean you know things like that are just a lifesaver and you know, having the mobile phone, you can have playlists, you know, rainforest playlists, and you yeah. can, you know, listen to them at, at night, uh, sort of a lower volume or whatever. That's that's uh, a great answer. I've got. I'd like to just interject, if I may, John, because you're talking about hearing aids, and we've had yeah. a lot of questions about hearing aids and hear, ear protection. And um, this is from Teresa. And she writes, um, what protection do you need for hearing aid wearers? Question mark. Do you just take them out? Question mark. Which may mean you only hear in muted form. Good question. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm not a fully trained audiologist. I'll probably speak to your audiologist. But I mean, a lot of the digital yeah. hearing aids have different settings on them. And I know some of them are linked to an app on your phone. But you can either manually change them. But some of them now, all singing or dancing. Well, you, you can actually program them for different settings. So it could be like cocktail bar type thing or, you know, di dinner party or gig, and it will just attenuate, it will turn it down. Um, that, do you know what? There's even ones now um, that are geo, uh, that when you walk, you can program them. So when you walk into different environments, they will automatically change as well. I'm sure I'm not, I didn't dream that, but I mean, <laughs> that's, they're, they're quite sophisticated now. So it depends on the type of hearing aids that you've got. But I know that they do have different settings. Um, but yeah, but sure, if, you, if you're, 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 I mean, this is another uh, question. It has been within, you know, the hearing aid sort of um, world about people say, saying, you know, you're increasing the volume of the, the frequencies you've lost. Is there a chance that you could still be damaging those those frequencies? Great question. Yeah, that you that you've lost. I mean, the answer to that question is, I think, speak to your audiologist definitely. See if that your, your hearing aid or hearing aids are programmable. Yeah. Um, that you can have different settings for different environments. Um, but yeah, I mean, what 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 hearing aids are are basically they're turning it up so you can hear properly. So if it means you have to take them out to turn it down. Um, because don't forget that basically you're amplifying at ear the volume so you know it, it can can be a, can be a concern for sure thanks very much john i've got another yeah. one here it, it's uh, in reference to the acs 19s and this is from sally um one of our really respected members um of our group and um a, a, a beloved member of our tinnitus community and um the question is, will my ACS-19 earplugs keep ears safe from an air display that she's about to go to quite shortly? Um, so would the ACS-19s be enough for an air, air show in your in your Okay, I think, I think she's probably talking about the Picato 19s, which is a oh, okay. 
Yeah, I think that's the, the, the only 19 decibel filter that we do is for a, a universal fit product. Yeah. Uh, for, really good. Uh, sim, uh, sim, um, utilizing the same membrane technology as we do in our pro series for custom. Yeah, the, I mean, the 19s are great. Again, it is about how loud it, how, how loud it is um, and, uh, you know, how much attenuation. So it's taking it down 19 decibels. Yeah. Even if, I mean, an air display, again, uh, the, the noise is not constant. I mean, I don't know where you're going to be. Uh, I mean, we, we do stuff with uh, with the military and uh, the aviation. Yeah, sports and all sorts, don't you? Yeah, motor But, I mean, if you'd seen an aircraft go over and stuff like that, it's very, very quick. So your exposure time is quite quick. quick. But it, even if, say, say if it was, uh, you know, um, 120 decibels, which is loud, your 19s are taking that down to um, down to 101. Yeah, you would have, you know, you'd have 15 minutes of that quick passing noise. So um, the only Brilliant. thing I would say that we do with the, air, air, um, the aviation industry is, is, but I mean, this is in the custom sort of uh, the pro series, is that we do have one that actually has a slightly higher attenuation in the mids and highs because, oh. you know, jets are very much that kind of white noise or higher kind of um, sort of sound. But I think you know if you're at an air display, um, yeah, 19s would be would be fine. I think at here at that distance, it's probably yeah. not going to be much above um, nine uh, upper 90s. So even then, you're thinking, say, if it was like 15 minutes without anything at all, say um, at, um, at 100, or say 30 minutes at 97. If you're going down 19, you've you've then increased your exposure time to sort of six hours do you know what i mean of of, of constant fly yeah. pass do you know what i mean yeah. yes so, but also i would re would also recommend this is the thing the difference between universal fit hearing protection and custom fit is you must make sure that you know it's like a little christmas tree uh, i should have i should, I should have <laughs> you know. ah he says um yeah here we go just making sure that, that you get that we call it the seal integrity, but make sure that the, the earplug is, is is fitting properly. So most, most universal earplugs, there's plenty on the market. Obviously, it looks like a little Christmas tree type sort of thing. So um, it will fit everybody's ear canals, uh, different shapes and sizes. And the cartilage of the ear, this is the cartilage, goes down to the second bend of the ear canal. Continues to grow and change shape for the, your entire life, ladies and gentlemen. So a bit like your nose. But anyway, getting a good good fit is, is really important. So um, the way I recommend fitting these to get that seal integrity, so the so the, the so the filter is doing the attenuation, you're not getting any acoustic leakage. That's quite, that's quite important. Um, because people just put their plugs in like yeah. that. Yeah. You know, and it, it's not really doing so. What I would say is that you've got a little tab on the end on well on our products, a little tab on the yeah. thumb there, hold the little tab. Get, yeah. get the ear. Oh, we've got to do this the other way around. Get the ear. Just pull the ear back That's and good. open the ear, ear canal. And then yeah. just all the way, just with your thumb, just so it really sits quite nicely into the um, auditory canal, the entrance at the, the bottom of the concha bowl with the tab tab at the top. So Brilliant. You still get hold of it. Don't, don't do it with the tab at the bottom because it sits in the, the tragal notch and sometimes people try and it's hard to get it out. So I would say... Yeah, make sure if you're using any form of universal hearing protection earplug, just make sure that it's fitted properly. Definitely. But yeah, 19s. I think if you're if you're a spectator, I mean, it'd be different if someone was airside and being either in front of the air intakes of a of a, of a jet or behind. That's a completely different situation. It may be for longer periods of time. But I think if you if you if you've got uh, aircraft flying over 19s be good yeah no worries yeah. that's the other thing about attenuating here in yeah. the conversation you know you don't you want to be talking to people that you're you're with um so um so with that they're kind of on the limit of that about 19 decibels you can still kind of have a conversation with people that's a brilliant answer thanks john oh that's brilliant that's really really helpful um what i'd like to now ask and it, again it's just really leading on to what you've just been talking about and we've got a question here, and I think it's really important to ask this now. It's in the right order. Are there any recommendations um, 
for the protection of kind of normal life things. So, for example, we've just had the air show, which is fairly dramatic. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking things like restaurants, theatre, cinema, noisy cafe, um, social events, you know. Yeah. What would you recommend, Jono? Well, we do a range. I think you'd have to go custom, really. Yeah. Or do do a Picato 16, which is a 16 decibel attenuator. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which has the, it does have the, the, the some of the best attenuating characteristics for any universal earplug on the market. It's, yeah. You can still have a conversation, just turns it down 16 decibels. So it's a good all rounder. But it does impend, it, it depend on your environment. But, yeah. you know, if you if you want to have a bit of versatility with that and guarantee that, that what the frequency response is going to be and how you're going to, excuse me, how you're going to hear is to go custom. What is custom? Don't know. Okay, that? custom, custom molded. The thing is with custom mold is you then get the opportunity to use a range of different filters for different. Yeah. Things. Now, custom molded is, as we said about this fitting problem the seal integrity and guaranteeing what level of protection you've got you can't really 100 percent guarantee the level of protection from a universal earplug because you don't know every time somebody puts it in it's going to be slightly different that's why you know do try and you know fit it properly follow the instructions with custom molded what we do is actually make a mold of your ear and then make the earplug to actually fit your ear canal perfectly out of the concha bowl that means that it fits like a glove which means that you've got perfect what we call seal integrity which means if you can guarantee that you can guarantee that every time you put it in and fit it properly you will actually get the attenuation characteristics the filter that we've put into your ear protection um, and also the, the 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 frequency characteristics of that that filter as well so custom we say if you're serious about sound or serious about listening, custom is custom is the way to go. Obviously, it's a difference in in, in, in cost, but if you value your hearing, it, you know it's it's nothing really at the end. Yes. Of the <laughs> and you know, and we we recommend maybe getting them checked for fit every four or five years, or maybe get them remolded. So you're talking about a you know use of four years really of a, of, a, of an earplug, which. If you work it out over four years, you know, the price is it's nothing, really. It's quite incredible, actually, because um, I'm not deliberately blowing your trumpet and I'm not. But I've got <laughs> earplugs here, Jono, from your ER days that yeah. I had fitted in 2008. Right. And they are going so strong. I remember it might have been Andy that fitted them on the Isle of Wight. We were using them for our students at a music college I worked at. And um, and I think he did say, I kind of recommend that you probably change them if you're a musician every two years. But I know probably maybe I should have changed them a bit more regularly and I have got new ones, but these last for ages. I'm so happy yeah. with them. And I guess what I was going to say is what, what I've done over the years is I take um, a pair of your ER15s or, or your ACS um, lighter gauge ones with the, with the attenuator that I can pop in and out. And I would say for for plane flights, because I, I love travel, I, I find that to relax on a plane, I'll probably use the, the 15s. Um, but for restaurants and cafes, if they're loud, I'd probably use an eight or something like that or a nine. Would you would you say yeah, I mean, that, the, the, the that thing, would be okay? Yeah. The thing is that, that this is the other thing about attenuating hearing protection, if you like, or yeah. ambient, um, linear, ambient, filtered, high fidelity hearing protection whatever i mean people call it different things i call it ambient hearing protection because you the whole point is using a level that will protect you increase your exposure time that's what you want to do but you still want to hear the music or more importantly in social recreational environments you want to be able to have a conversation yeah and even in working environments that's why some people don't wear hearing protection because it's like oh you know, I can't talk about Strictly or the football or whatever. So people will have them hanging out, you know, they don't wear it properly. But yeah, I mean, our pro series, we do a 10, 10 decibel uh, level, which is fine. Again, going back to that thing, you know, probably background noise, even in a noisy pub. I, I, I mean, I've done some sound pressure levels. Uh, you can you can get apps that measure the decibels. It's not 
you wouldn't do a, a formal noise assessment, but you get a rough, yeah. probably worth downloading an app and just having a look. Yes. You know, sort of maybe upper 80s, upper 90s. But if you take 10 decibels off of that, you know, you're then, you know, you're, you're talking eight hours exposure time of that thing, but you're still being managing to have a conversation. So it just, it, you know, again, people don't get paranoid about, God, it's really noisy here, but you, you don't really know. I mean, rule of thumb, if you can't have a conversation with somebody at two meters away it's probably yeah. too loud you yeah. know and if you're in a pub or a bar where we've all done it we literally or a gig you're shouting to 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 tell them that it's their round and they can't hear you is um you know it's too it's too it's too loud it's got to be mid upper 90s for sure if not more than that so that's when you, you, you're more at risk. Or, you know, you can get apps on your phone. You can see the little traffic light system. There's a few good ones. I've got one here. Um, that is quite interesting to have a, have a look at these. Um, I'll just show you this one quick. Yes, please, Johnny. Um, if I can find it. It's called SPL and FFT. I mean, just, just go sound meter on your... And this is quite a good one because it has um, like a little traffic light thing. So... Oh, yeah. oh, I see. So, and it will tell you what your what roughly what your dose is. Um, and it will also do a, 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 re, a record. It will see what your dose is, what your exposure is. What's that called, uh, Jono? What's it called? This this one's called um, SPL, as in sound pressure level, NFFT. Okay. But there's so many. I mean, I've had this yeah. for quite a few years, but it tells you what the LEQ is, what the maximum thing is. And it will you, it's quite nice. It says that this volume is moderate. Um, although if I speak up a little bit, it goes <laughs> annoyance possible, which <laughs> some people listening might go, yes, that's, that's, in, that's, it, that's uh, definitely true there, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Well, you got, can, uh, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry Johnny. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. But there's loads out there. But, you know, they, they I mean, they're not that accurate, but it gives you an idea. But you'd be quite surprised. Do you know what? I, I mean, I'm a bit of an anorak. Actually, I did it today in Costa or should have been in Costa. Um, but they do understand a long espresso. Anyway, um, <laughs> I was in the toilets and, you know, those air things, you know, the air, they're so noisy. So I actually, Oh, they're horrible. Oh, I can't stand yeah. them. 107 decibels. Oh, no way. They're awful. They cut your teeth up. They're awful. Oh, gee. I mean, if you worked in, um, you know... In a factory that made them. Well, yeah, or you worked in a toilet where you, you know, whatever. But you, you'd probably be... Well, it, yeah, anything over 85, you've got to have hearing protection. Yeah, I hate them. Absolutely so, hate so them. in actual fact, 107. So let's work this out. 15, 7, uh, 6. So... Um, it's about a minute and a half. God. Fans, yeah. That is absolutely awful. I've got a question here that I wouldn't mind part answering, if that's okay, just to put someone's uh, mind at rest. Yeah. And the, the question is, are there any risks to getting custom moulds done? Now, I was really concerned when I first had my really terrible tinnitus. And so I think it might have been Andy that might have might have been doing the process uh, the procedure on the Isle of Wight years ago and I have to say it was actually quite wonderful because I was quite I think what I was scared about was being blocked completely by the silicon and then having this horrendous tinnitus sound that I yeah. probably felt like that was really scary and worried me but it was yeah. actually strange it did the opposite it was cold it was a lovely feeling mm. the person administering it whether it was Andy or not or one of your team was just incredible they spoke about the, the process i knew exactly what was going to happen they explained what it might be like there was a string so you knew that they could take it out it was really expertly placed in it's a very strange feeling but a wonderful feeling i actually really liked it i felt like i was in a very warm soft cave and it was it was different and actually when you are exposed to your really loud tinnitus when you first have tinnitus it almost I couldn't differentiate between loudness and quietness, which is really interesting because it was like I was placed in an anechoic chamber that really had no kind of discernible sound reference. So it was yeah. interesting for me. I actually changed a lot of things when they were took out. 
I suddenly gained a tiny amount of perspective with my sound. So could you talk us through the procedure and, and what happens, please? Yeah, Jono? well, um, it's called a toscopy, basically. We, we have to, you have to be um, or taking an ear impression. Yeah. And you have to be trained. So, you know, um, I mean, they, you, 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 I don't know if you can still buy these kits where you can kind of do it yourself. I wouldn't recommend that. No, thanks. No. Um, you have to be trained. I mean, all of our staff are trained to British Society of Audiology standards in otoscopy. Yeah, that's pretty much everything up to the tympanic membrane, the the the, um, the eardrum. So uh, it's a very safe procedure, but yeah, you do have to be trained to do it. So um, yeah, we understand, and I mean, all, all of all of my team of you know, yeah, um, and also working in different working with clients that you understand so you know if you're working with musicians that you understand you know how sensitive some people are I was with a BBC concert, concert orchestra last week um, and some of these people it's their careers you know so they are sensitive about people even touching their ears and stuff so you, you know so it's about talking through the process and it, doing it in a very calm calm way so it's a very safe and uh, simple procedure it takes about 10 to 15 minutes so what you do is check the ear canal, first of all. Now, as we know, as soon as you look in anybody's ear or go to look in someone's ear, they go, oh, well, I hope my ears are clean. And it's like, well, that, that kind of, having clean ears is not normal. Or no. I wouldn't even say clean, but saying, oh, well, I'm wax in my ears. Everybody has wax in their ears. It's there for a reason. Um, it has a function. Um, but in order to take uh, a good ear impression, we need fairly clear ears or yeah. really ears that don't have any hard wax. And you can tell how hard the wax is by the colour of it. So the more darker brown it is, it's harder. I mean, it, it can go with people getting impacted ears of wax and stuff. It can go black. Yeah. It's, it's hard as a, as, as a dry pea, you know. Yeah. Um, so that that that's quite important. So if, if the ear, if there's too much ear wax in there, or we can't see the ear drum, because we have to get up to the second bend, which is where the the, the cartilage finishes, to get the ear plug or the ear, ear earphone to fit up to that point, quite important for a good acoustic seal, which is actually where it goes through the the, the hole in the skull. Actually, um, if we can't see the eardrum, we can't proceed legally, medically, we can't proceed because we don't know what we're pushing, you know, what we're, what, what's behind there, you see, because what we have to do is put a small little, I should have had my kit here, but it's, anyway, I haven't, but um, we put a small little foam pad uh, on a string down the ear canal to block the ear canal off just in front of the, the eardrum. Might tickle a little bit. Some people get a cough reflex. Yeah. Completely normal. Normally it's in one side. Um, some people do, some, most people don't, but some people can get a little tickle in the back of the throat completely normal, it's a normal reflex. Once, and then we check it again to make sure that's sealed properly. Uh, this little foam earplug, very small little foam earplug on a string, the string's hanging out. And then what we do, we, we gently syringe in a two-part medical silicon into the ear, up to that earplug, and then backfill the ear canal very gently, and then fill up the concha bowl here. Normally, we take a full concha mould up to the helix here. Yeah. Um, so, and fit, fill the whole ear there. And everything goes nice and quiet, and it, like you say, it does feel a little bit, little bit cold. That sets in about, so it's got a silicon and a hardener in it. It sets in about four minutes, depending on yeah. the, 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 the environmental conditions, the temperature. Um, and then what we do, that sets, it goes hard or it goes soft. It's still squidgy, but it, it, it makes a mould, if you like, the, uh, of your ear. So then we gently, gently take that out, wiggle it out, release the, uh, the, the air pressure from the vacuum that you can cause an air. So it's very de delicately take it out. And then you have a mould of your ear. Again, I should have, would have been nice to actually have one, but I haven't got one here. So, and then what we do, so that's a, that's a, that's a, it's, it's a, model of your ear basically it's quite interesting to see uh, the shape of it and everybody's ears are different shapes and sizes it's quite interesting when you see your left and right ear how unsymmetrical we are yeah so true with with our process that goes back to the lab we scan it um and uh, uh with a laser and create a 3d model of the ear Amazing. 
Um, and then what we do, then we superimpose the components depending on what products you're having on it. Then we 3D print the reverse of it, like the shell of it, if you like, like the mold, to then in, put the silicon into it to actually then make the earplug. So it's micron perfect. It's a perfect replica of your ear. That's amazing. Plus we have your ears on file in 3D. So if you lost them or you wanted another product, we can just print your, the mold of your ear again, yeah. make, make the products. So that's, that's, that's what it, so that's, it's far accurate. So from taking the, the ear impression to the actual products, there's actually no difference at all. Basically, it's a perfect model of your ears. So that means that we can guarantee that, that, as I said earlier, that seal integrity or that fit is guaranteed. Plus all of our uh, earplugs, hearing protection is made from soft medical grade silicon. It's a 40 sure hardness, so it's quite soft and spongy. Actually, when it warms up to your body temperature, it becomes a, bit, a little bit more, uh, what's the word, malleable. Yeah. Um, so they kind of dissolve in your ears, they're very comfortable. And also, because when you talk or when you sing, your ear canals move. So obviously with a soft silicon, it's moving with the ear canal, which maintains that seal integrity. Which with other products, when you've got hard acrylic custom earplugs or in-ear monitors, you don't get that. So you can get uh, venting occurring, uh, which is a bit, a bit annoying. And also, what's then, venting? What's that? Well, it's when you really open your mouth and you kind ah. of get a gap. You know, more so with sort of hard in-ear monitors. But I think I've had that, John. and it was actually, funnily enough, it was with a different company. So it's. Uh... But I, I like them because these are quite unusual. They're ER37s, I think. I got these in 2006. But the pandemic, there's been one advantage of the pandemic for my hearing, just one advantage, no others, obviously. But um, And that's been because I have a good relationship with my ENT consultant uh, who's been helping us with T-minus over the years, Dr. Baza Barrage, who's amazing. But... Um, Every time I'd have my earwax uh, removed, because obviously there's two things really, you know, the earplugs do create, for me anyway, because my ears produce more wax, because I do music 24 seven every day. It's not really a day I have a break from, but because yeah. I use earplugs all the time, I do get um, that added extra bonus occasionally of having impacted earwax. So it does yeah. push the wax into my ear. But what I was going to say is that, with this slightly hardened uh, silicon, which isn't your make at all, I've had a problem whereby it's been rubbing the skin. And so I was possibly going to have to have an operation. I don't now, I don't think, because he's oh. never brought up. Because it, he said you need two years to recover. And it's been precisely pretty much two years where I've been confined to a recording studio, where I've not really needed to yeah. use it. So, um, but your ones are really spongy and you don't get the venting as you were saying i understand that mm. and they are really comfortable and you know when i was at well quite often i might spend the night like you do at a hotel i like just put them in as a matter of course because it just means that i don't know i just i find i sleep really well with them and they are so comfortable and you're absolutely right they are almost like your own skin you don't really feel it and it's nothing really happening we've got another question about it i'd like you to answer this but I think it's quite an easy one to answer, um, but it, it's a concern that we have from Haley, and I, I understand that it was odd when I first had it, earplugs. And Haley says, um, also while wearing my earplugs, I felt like I was off balance when I was walking about in them. Is this a normal kind of situation, or should I speak with ENT? Well, there's a, there's a couple of levels. I mean, if you've got a yeah. higher level of attenuation, depending on what earplug you're, you're wearing, yeah. you can have more of the occlusion effect. Yeah. For singers, it's not good. But also, if you talk, you you, you hear more of your, your own body in your head. Yeah, really. same. Yeah, I get it. I <clears throat> but it can isolate you from, from the outside world. And also, you know, all of our senses are working yeah. tandem. So, you know, coordination with the eyes, um and, and years and stuff like that so if the the level of attenuation is, is higher some people can experience that i've not experienced it um but it, it, it can happen however what also can, can can happen is is that um really the balance is more to do with the vestibule organ sat on top of the cochlea uh which is a fluid filled organ that 
you know gives you a balance and i i don't know if you've ever had i mean i've had a when i was just testing they were testing my ears having this um um well they've tested me for uh many years disease i think it was That's okay right. yeah yeah is that if you if you if 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 one side gets warmer than the other they blow hot or cold air into different sides it, it can make you feel like uh it can make you dizzy um so that, that can have an effect so but I, I would say if it is making you feel like that is to use uh this is the other thing is that you know um our well our filters the air moves both ways so they've, they've they, they don't block everything out so they're still letting the air through so the the ear canal can still breathe so the 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 auditory canal and the middle ear is not warming up from you know whatever so they are vented like that um, which helps to uh, you know cut out the occlusion effect but also it's, it's more comfortable um so it's either that or maybe use a, a, a an earplug with a slightly lower level of attenuation I mean, you don't need much like you're saying we said earlier you know social yeah. situations and i i wear these even when i've got to london 10 or 15 decibels is just enough to take the edge off yeah. and it and it just makes you so much calmer and like i say with the sleeping we do do one to four sleeping which is slightly designed oh. a different shape actually we might have to sort you out a set of those actually Rupert, because they're it's actually true. caves so when you lie on them they don't they don't push into your head but so it's finding the right earplugs for for the, the environment that you're in but it may be because it's too much too much uh attenuation that some people i mean it's funny funnily enough when uh, going back to just having the ear impressions done in my in my career in, in this career i've yeah. had four or five people faint on me when they've had they've been completely blocked yeah so i can imagine that i can they find that they just get a bit disorientated and st stuff um uh i mean that's out of thousands of people i've fitted here in yeah. and in-ear monitors um, so four out of, in, in the last uh, 10, eight or 10 years or whatever. But it, it does happen. But yeah, I, I would say um, to Hayley, um, yeah, I would go back to your audiologist, just have a check to see that there's nothing else going on there. There's various tests that they can do. Um, but uh, yeah, or use a lower level of attenuation as long as it's safe to do so, depending on what environment you're in, that, that might help compensate for that kind of slight, slight disorientating kind of um, feeling for sure. Yeah, or that That's isolation, it may be that. It's a great answer, Jono, yeah. thank you. That was- Well, I hope it's, I hope it's a help. I mean, it's, it's not just one thing, it's normal, like with all these things, it's a process of elimination really, it's yeah. fine to find the right thing. Um, yeah. Superb. That was from Sally. So forgive me, Sally. Haley, I have your question. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Thank, sorry. Hope that's of some help, Sally. <laughs> um, th this kind of leads on to actually what you were just about to touch on, which I thought was really interesting. You were talking about the dizziness. And what Haley's asking is, can hearing loss cause my dizziness? Um, I guess what you were saying when you were talking about almost that complete kind of um silence it, it does i mean yeah it i i definitely definitely felt that when like probably like yourself that when i had my first um hearing experience where my hearing was considerably knocked down because i perforated the eardrum with tinnitus definitely certainly i nearly passed out it, it was so made me so disorientated and dizzy but I don't know if that's the rule of thumb, but I certainly in my case, it made me feel very dizzy when I had when I had sudden hearing loss. Anyhow. Yeah. The only thing I can say is yeah. I have um, a, a, an episode, basically. Uh, and, it, um, and this was. Um, I ended up having to I was on the A14 at Huntington. <laughs> I remember it well. Oh. And um, I got this kind of vertigo kind of thing and my tinnitus just went turned up wh whacked up it's like it started ringing oh dear and i thought oh god i had to pull over and i thought oh, i just had this like vertigo feeling so dizzy dizziness vertigo feeling it was definitely to do with my ears because the, the tinnitus just went up oh no i, I had to dial 999 because it freaks me out i got out of the car and i was holding on to the front of the bonnet just like this and just felt dizzy thought i was going to pass out so i dialed 999 anyway um 
anyway, cut a long story short, they took me to A&E, but they couldn't find out what was wrong with me. But I got referred back to my tinnitus clinic. Actually, it's in, in, in Ipswich, actually, here. And they did a few more tests. And that's when I had the, the tests on the, the uh, my balance test, uh, which is a crazy experience. Anyway, they said that um, it, it wasn't many as disease, but it, um, it was possibly an, an inner ear infection that can af affect the vestibule organ or the cochlea. Now, these apparently these um, infections can hang around for months, apparently, and then you can just get something that just triggers it off and it can make the tinnitus worse. And, and, and apparently that's possibly what I had. I think I had some antibiotics. But because it was only in one side, see, this is what this is, because it was only in one side, um, it was that that's why it starts causing this dizziness or this vertigo or this kind of spinning thing. Because one, you know, the ear one side is trying to give you information that the, the other ear is going, no, you, you, you know, so that, that's that's partly what it is. So it could be an in-ear ear infection. Um, but I've, I mean, personally, I mean, I've not heard of it, you know, people sort of suffering from noise induced hearing loss that then felt felt dizzy from it as far as, as far as I can remember. But I, you know, more often than not, that that kind of dizziness or, or vertigo sort of feelings normally to do with the 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 it's the, 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 um, the organ on top of the cochlea. But um, but hey, I, I mean, again, you know, talk to a talk to a, a professional audiologist and tell them yeah and it's, it's just worth getting it checked out yeah that's the, those inner ear infections can hang around for for months apparently yeah i, I absolutely it's, it's in a sense when i was at ronnie scott's when i was 22 and i damaged my hearing i had quite a serious ear infection prior to that which lasted a couple of months and you're absolutely right it was the same it just hung around and i'm sure that weakened my system and so it really didn't do my auditory system any good when I then finally had some proper noise damage and noise exposure. Yeah, I've got I mean, I think yeah, different. Sorry. Just, just, just quickly, I think different people yeah. respond differently. You know, it's people, yeah. like, people that suffer from hyperacusis and you know sensitivity to hearing. You know, some people it can make them nauseous. You know, different people respond differently. You know, absolutely, um, absolutely. I've got the last question here, John Owen. Okay. Thanks so much. I, I, I know your time is very precious, and I, I really wanted to. It's gone so brilliant. quick. It's I know so it's quick. mad. Uh, I've so enjoyed this. This is so dear to my heart because this yeah. is a company that I would have been using, whether I know you or not, Jono. It's like okay. I use what you do. They're the best, as far as I'm concerned. Otherwise, Bless I wouldn't you. have loads of them. You know, I mean, yeah. I've got I've got eight of them. You know, eight pairs. Yeah. Um, the ACS Museum on the Isle of Wight. <laughs> worth well, a visit yeah. worth a visit <laughs> definitely well you supplied the music college i work with and, and you were fantastic you know and you offered right. not just the plugs but educational services everything it was a it was a, a whole package it was brilliant and i know that you're completely hot on that you do a lot of the music colleges and I, I, you know i mean there's so we need to do part two if you don't mind next year is that all right johnny yeah, no, no worries. You're um, right. Um, just, just quickly, I want to. I don't know if I talked about yeah. this, but you know, education is the key. You know, I couldn't believe when I worked in in further music, further music education, is that they it's, it wasn't being discussed, and it's just like it seems crazy. The next generation need to know, you know, how the ear works and how you can damage it. But young people per se, recreational and social listening is a major part of popular culture. Right. And there are some audiologists and even some doctors saying, you know, we're going to have a next generation of young people that are listening to so many portable music devices and everything's done on headphones and stuff. You know, th these kids are going to you know, have noise damage by the time that they're 30. Serious concern. You know, the World Health Organization, there's plenty of stats out there and plenty of research that's been done. Yeah. So it is important. You know, I, I don't even know why it's not embedded into the curriculum, you know, you know, young 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 kids you know um sex education adult um uh alcohol awareness drug awareness online security cyber be cyber safe well why not talk about protecting your hearing you know i know it's, anyway i know it's crazy i i totally understand that john the last thing i wanted to do yeah. was to really just the last thing is to discuss the range of the ear protection that you have and from my reckoning and i wanted you to just be able to correct me but you have the picantes to start with which are the non-custom 
but the ones yeah. I'm really interested in are really your your custom range. And so you have the Pro 17, if I'm right, the Pro 26, uh, the Pro 15. What's the Pro 27? Is what's um, it's more industrial, really. We do a okay. 10, 15, 17, 20, 26, and 27. 27 is more industrial. It's a slight more um, attenuation in the higher frequency bandwidth, which we use for in the aviation. We've used it in the aviation industry because that higher kind of white yeah. noise kind of when you're getting up there um, and also for motorcyclists, wind noise as well. So that's more industrial. Um, the Pro 17, just recreationally, and this is, I will say this to people with tinnitus because... Brilliant. Like you say, some there's some people, everybody's different. So you you like that isolation, you feel quite comfortable with it. Yeah, I love it. Um, I like it. For me, I don't. And um, too much attenuation, it 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 I'm um, you know, I am more aware of my tinnitus. So it's getting that balance that you can still hear um uh, you know and communicate properly or hear the music but uh, protect yourself. So that that's what it's all about, it's finding the right balance between the two. And I'll just say recreationally, sort of 10, 15, and our Pro 17, which is one of the most natural sounding earplugs in the world. It's almost flat frequency response. Brilliant. Just turns it all down. So it's just like turning the volume down. Yeah, but that's what I say with people with, you know, chronic tinnitus, um, you know, be careful about having a higher level of attenuation because it could, you know, you could just be more aware. We all know about tinnitus, don't we? As soon as we think about it, you know, it's suddenly, suddenly, it's there all the time, but then it leaps yeah. and it goes, yes, I am still here. Yes. So, you know, you just be aware of that um, for sure. Thank you very much, Jono. I mean, that's great. I, already I'm thinking I'd like some sleepers, a Pro 17 custom and the Pro 27s for aviation. I'm so, sure. Uh, I'm sure we can. I'm sure we can sort something out for you, Rupert. It's brilliant because I. I mean, these yeah. have lasted since mostly since 2008. So I reckon I'm due for some. <laughs> well, and like I said, your ears, your ears continue to grow and change shape. So to be to be fair, you're probably not being properly protected by your old yeah. ones. So okay. uh, I mean, we can do a seal integrity test, but but yeah, I would recommend enough. you know getting some new ones done for sure. You know, I'm going to do that, Jono. Um, you know, if anyone is unsure, Jono, <laughs> if they see it um, as product to choose, is there a guide that could be of use? So, for example, just to kind of finish off, and just before that, thanks ever so much. It's brilliant, yeah, Jono. Right. Thank you and Andy for the best product. It's just unreal. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. And brilliant to collaborate with you um great yeah. thanks for giving us that opportunity but where do we where do we find you so uh, what where's the website what is it what's the well, number? AC, what's everything yeah acs acs custom i mean we're in 24 countries across across the across amazing planet earth <laughs> so um <laughs> but you can you know acscustom.com forward slash uk will take you to our uk so there is some information on there just go to the little buttons along the top there is some stuff um, and even click on the education page as well, because there's um, some little videos and there's a there's a um, uh, an exposure time calculator. So you can put, if you can know kind of roughly what the sound pressure level is, it will tell you how long and how safe you are for how long. And then if you choose one of our products, it will tell you how much protection you've got. Oh, fantastic. That's quite and also, fantastic. James is just um, saying, which is really important. I can't believe I've just forgotten that. Could you mention? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm really. <laughs> could you mention to our customers that they get twenty percent discount and they can message us for a code? Okay, well, yeah, you all you get twenty percent discount. Um, it's yes, great. Actually, do. I was able to. Um, um, a, friends of mine that have a great band on the Isle of Wight, um, they they've come to get their twenty percent, and that's great. So they're using ear protection before they go off on yeah. their eighty gigs on a tour next year. Um, well, that, that, that's it. You know. Um, um there's no excuse no music induced tinnitus and music induced hearing loss is 100 percent preventable yeah pe period but also can i say thank you because you know i think i found your app before i found you guys as it were and um i you know it's been it's fantastic i've tried different things but you know uh, hopefully all the listeners tonight are are 
using the, using the app. I think it's brilliant. I mean, I love loving your music. Very calm, but just the the, the facilities on there stuff. And I do like the little quotes in the morning. It sets me up for the day. So thank you for that. That's great. Brilliant, John. We're going to come back in a minute if that's okay, and we'll join yep. you privately and just sort of say. Thanks ever so much because that is right. just not to say that personally. But thank, thank you, you Jono. And uh, you can find us on wwwt hyphen, as James would say, dot info. All right, James, done that. Instagram, tinnitus minus, Twitter, Facebook, T hyphen James, <laughs> minus tinnitus wellness support group, LinkedIn, and on Apple iOS, you can look for us uh, as T hyphen minus tinnitus wellness app. Thanks again, Jono. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Jono.